Okay guys, so in this video we are going to cover both cash receipts and cash payment in general. Remember on the previous video we cover a cash receipt general separate and we did another video for cash payment general separate. So in this video we are going to do both of them at the same time. So the transaction that we are going to read guys, some of them they are going to fall under cash receipt general some of them they are going to fall under cash payment general which means that at least you must have a background of how are you going to identify cash receipts and how are you going to identify cash payment general all that we are going to do it in this video just make sure that you watch until the end of the video okay and let's start with our lesson okay transaction number one they said cash sales according to cash register role is amount to 15,390. Remember, once we receive cash, we're gonna record it under cash receipt. Once we pay cash, we're gonna record it under cash payment journal. Simple as that. All right, so we have received cash from sales. Remember, we have a different column which we have to fill. All right, because this one, of course, we receive cash from sales, we're going to record it as a what? As cash receipts general all right let's start with the date the date will be on one uh, january 2023 so this is a cash receipt journal all right then a analysis of receipts we are going to write where did we receive this money from from the customers of course because we make a what a sales okay it's gonna be a customers okay then a bank we have to fill the amount that we receive from our bank is 15,390 so this amount we receive it from sales which means that we are not going to go to a sundry account we only go to sundry account only if uh, we don't have column for that transaction okay it's gonna be 15,390 90. So on the next video guys we are going to cover a case receipt and case payment that has included VAT input and VAT output. You have to make sure that you stay on this channel so that you will watch the video as well for that included a VAT transition. Alright, number two, uh, made an EFT or, or electronic fund transfer to pay a wage of 7,500. Now companies pay their employees a wages of 7500 which means that is going to be cash payment general okay is second of january okay we pay employees of course employees and the amount that we pay employees is 7500 okay is it creditors control inventory no which means that we have to go to sandra account and record 7500 and indicate that this is the amount for for wages simple as that all right let's go to number three an eft to supplier to settle the account of inventory purchase last month is 7200 last month we purchased inventory on credit now we are going to pay that amount to settle our debt which means that we make a what a payment okay which means that we're gonna record it under cash payment is on 3 january and the details we are going to write a settlement account okay remember uh, the amount is how much is 7200 remember when we purchase on credit we record it under creditors control which means that it's gonna fall under our creditors control which means that we're not going to go to a sundry account in this case all right the following one they said uh, received insurance compensation from aa insurer of 2750 this is the amount that we receive which means that we're gonna go to cash receipts general okay it's on four January, we receive insurance compensation from okay we have the name of the company which means that we're gonna say 
AA insurer and the amount is 2750 which means that we're gonna go to Sandra account and say 2750 and we record uh, the amount of insurance expense simple as that okay which means that now we can go to the next transaction the next transaction they say that they sold inventory on credit to tt enterprise amounted to 650 we sold inventory but not in terms of cash we sold it on on credit are we going to record it under any of this no these two deal with cash items only this one will be recorded under a debtors control account which means that we are going to skip this one it's not gonna fall under any of these two okay number six interest received from b bank of 755 uh, has been received we received the interest which means that is cash receipts general okay we receive interest on 7 of january we receive interest from b bank okay and the amount is 755 which means that because we don't have column for interest received we're gonna go to sandry account and write two say, 255 Oh, so it's 755 uh, which is interest received okay then the next one equipment purchase cash amounted to 75,000 equipment purchase cash amounted to 75,000 which means that this one is gonna fall under cash payment general all right a cash payment general is this one of course we are going to record it because cash has been paid on 7 january equipment purchased equipment purchased but if we have the name of the company that we purchase equipment from we are going to write the name of the company here okay and the amount is 75,000. Okay, because we don't have column for equipment here, we're gonna go to Sandra account and say 75,000 and say equipment. Simple as that, guys. Okay, then the following one a rent income of 8,800. Okay, 8,500 received from smart a tenant we receive a rent from a tenant called smart which means that our cash receipt is going to be affected because we receive cash okay we receive cash on 8 of january from smart or you can just write a tenant is fine okay then the amount is eight thousand 500 okay then the following one the following column we write 8000 8500 okay this will be a rent income rent income okay so this is the last transaction so before uh, we close this guys Please make sure that every time when we prepare cash receipts and cash payment, make sure that you write a totals. Make sure that you calculate all the total that you are going to get. Add everything under a bank and write total. Under a sales, write total. Under Sandra account, also write a total. Even for this one, please make sure that you calculate and write the totals uh, that you got. And you write the total decide then you will be done with cash receipts and cash payment journal so we are going to do 
another video guys as i promise that we are going to include a vat input under cash payment general way we are going to calculate a vat as well as under cash receipt we are going to include that output as well so i hope you enjoy and you learn something thank you so much guys just appreciate us by like comment and subscribe to this channel so that it can grow and have more view thank you so much guys i will see you on the next video